we've implemented everything that is needed for the requirements of version 2 of the RPS Project Tracker. All the functionality is there. However, the current theme that we're using, and that's the Kendo UI default theme, which looks very nice, but it doesn't quite match our existing bootstrap theme. Kendo UI for jQuery comes with a number of different themes out of the box, and we can also build our own theme. So in this chapter, we're going to look at some styling options, including themes, the theme builder, and icons. Right now, all the components that we've added are stylistically the same because they use the Kendo UI default theme. The primary color of the default theme of Kendo UI is orange, and you can tell by the orange highlights that are present throughout this theme. Here it is on the backlog, and if we take a look at the dropdowns, you'll see the selected item being presented with orange, and on the details page, the slider is orange as well as the tabs. Another feature of the default theme is that the text boxes in all the inputs have sharp edges. They don't have rounded corners. So this looks very nice. However, version one of the application used the bootstrap theme. And the default bootstrap theme that we're using has blue highlights and it has larger boxes and larger buttons and rounded corners. Now, personal preferences aside, it's part of our job here to make our application look thematically the same as version one was. Luckily, Kendo UI comes with bootstrap theme right out of the box. Now we're gonna update the theme that we're using, but there are quite a few options available. Let's head over to the documentation and under style and appearance, you have some options here, less based themes and SAS based themes. I'm gonna discuss less based themes real quick here. These are the older themes that are available. And as you can see, there are quite a few to pick from. Now these already come in the box when you install Kendo UI. You can see some previews here and some of the data visualization previews as well. The way the less based themes work is that you have to include the common CSS file and then the theme CSS file. You can experiment with the themes by going over to our style imports in the shared folder. And right now you can see that we're importing the default version two minified CSS file. This is the theme that we're using, the default theme. And you can see the location of where we're pulling this CSS file from. So we can go to node modules, progress, Kendo UI, CSS, web, and then you can see all the different themes available here. So for example, if I wanted to use the black theme, I would comment out this one. And instead I would use kendo.black.min.css. Let's take a quick look at our application. Here you can see that now we have dark styling for the application. Buttons and all our Kendo UI components have this dark theme. The black theme is an example of a less base theme. It's listed right here on the less base themes. So that means we need to use the common file along with it. Otherwise, there are going to be some elements that are missing. So I'm going to copy this and right before the black theme, I'm going to specify kendo common.min.css. Let's take a look. And now you see that some of the elements that were missing before are now present and it looks a little bit better. We're not going to be using the less base themes for our application. I just wanted to demonstrate that those are available. We're going to be using the newer SAS based themes. The SAS based themes don't need a common file. So all you need to do is just install the bootstrap theme and that's it. You don't need a common file for this. So let's go in here. I'm going to remove these two lines and this is where we had the default theme. Instead of default V2, I'm going to use bootstrap V4. And in case you're wondering how I came up with that file name, you can find it right here in the web folder of CSS. And there it is, kendo bootstrap v4 min.css. Remember our style imports affects the entire application because we're importing this file in all our pages. Let's head over to the application. And now you can see that we have the bootstrap theming applied. Our tabs are larger and they have blue styling and they also look like the bootstrap tabs. The inputs are larger with rounded corners the drop downs are also styled like Bootstrap with blue highlights, and the buttons on the dashboard are also styled like Bootstrap. So that's great. Our application matches now. Now I've imported the CSS file directly from the Kendo UI package. However, the other option that you can use is to import the actual SAS files. Let's say you had a different build process where you needed the original SAS files and you wanted to change the SAS variable names or variable values that are passed in. You can install the SAS themes directly from NPM and the instructions are listed right over here in the SAS based themes section. For example, you would install 
the progress slash kendo theme default, and that would install all the SAS files necessary. And then you can import the SAS files and work on them that way. All the variable names are listed here, and you can update them as you like. We've seen how easy it is to apply one of the built-in themes to our application. We've done this by switching from the default theme to the bootstrap theme. We've also seen the number of themes that are available out of the box. But what if you wanted to match your own company's branding or none of the themes that come out of the box actually satisfy your needs? Well, you can go through and manually change all the variables, the colors, the font sizes, the fonts, or you can use the theme builder that comes with Kendo UI to create your theme in the browser. Right over here, under styles and appearance, under SAS based themes, you have access to this SAS theme builder and some instructions on how to use it. Let's take a look. I'm going to open this up and you can click start styling now. If you don't have any theme builder projects already created, you're going to get the create new project template. Just give your project a name. I'm going to call mine RPS and you can base your theme on top of one of these existing themes. I'm going to select Kendo Bootstrap and click create. Now this is the preview page where you can see all the components that you're going to style on the right. That's the live preview mode and all the styles that you can edit on the left, including some of these colors. Here's the Kendo color primary. I'm going to change that to something like this purple color here. And when I do that, you'll see that on the right side, we instantly get a preview of all the components that have been updated, the components that use that primary color, including the button, the floating action button, and some other examples. Now, when you're done theming, you can go up to the top and click on export, which will download a zip archive with your new theme. Go ahead and unpack that archive and inside you'll see the RPS folder, a dist folder, a CSS folder with the styles for our RPS project and a SAS folder. We're going to take this RPS.CSS file, which is the full style sheet. Notice it's almost a megabyte in size. This will give you all the styles of all the components with your overrides. I'm going to copy this file. Let's go back to the code and in the source directory, right next to the style.css file, I'm going to add our new rps.css file. Let's just open this up in Explorer or Finder, and I'm going to paste in the new file here. There it is. Find your style imports.js file, and I'm going to comment out this bootstrap for import. Instead, I'm going to import our new rps.css file. And now let's take a look at the application. Here you'll see that we indeed have our new color showing up anywhere there is a primary color used, including buttons, pager, the tab bar, the slider, and the drop down lists, just to name a few examples. So that's how we can apply a custom theme built with Theme Builder. Kendo UI ships with the large set of icons that you can use right out of the box to add that extra final polish to your applications. If you need an icon in your application, you don't need to hunt down a third party library like Font Awesome or Icomoon. You can just look through the Kendo UI icons and put it right into your application. That doesn't mean you can't use Font Awesome or Icomoon or other font libraries. You're free to do so. But since Kendo UI already comes with a lot of icons, we're going to utilize a couple of them in our application. And we're going to see two different methods of adding icons. Let's take a look at the available icons now. Under style and appearance, you have this web font icon section. This gives you a brief introduction of how to use icons. And I can scroll down here to get to the icons themselves. So here's a listing of all the different icons with their names and class names. You can look through them. You can even search. Let's say I wanted an edit icon. I'm going to hit control F and type in edit. And I'm just going to click down until I get to some of the icons here. There's one. Now let's say I wanted to add this edit icon to my application. And I want to do that right over here on the details page, right before the name of the item. I want to signify that I'm editing this item. So how do we do this? Well, let's go ahead and open up the details page. And right over here, I have my H1. This is the item title. I'm setting this title in code and go down here. Right over here, I'm setting the text to the item title. I'm going to make a couple of changes here. Inside this H1, I'm going to create a span and I'm going to move this ID right here to that span so that I'm changing the text of the span. This should not change the functionality of the app at all. Let's give it a try and see if it works. Okay, so there's our span. It's inside the H3 and I can still change my item and it updates. 
The reason I wanted to create a separate span is because I wanted to put an icon inside the H2 right before the title. And the way I can add an inline icon here is by creating another span and adding a class to this. Now, every icon that I want to be a standalone icon, I need to first add the k-icon class. This will tell that span that we want it to be an icon. And second, we need the actual icon that we want to use. So here, the icon name is k-i-edit. That's the class name that we want to use to show that icon. So I'm going to add k-i-edit. And that's all I need to do to get an icon showing up like this. So that's one way of adding an icon to the application. And this way of adding the icon is in line as a standalone icon. What if we wanted to add the icon to an existing Kendo component, like a button? For example, here on the backlog page, I have this add button that opens up this add item dialog. Well, I want to convert this to a Kendo button and I want to add an icon to it. So it looks like a plus. Let's head over to the code. Take a look at our backlog HTML file. And this is the add button right here. Right now, this add button is just an HTML button. So to get a hold of it in code, I want to add an ID to it. So I'm going to add the ID button add new item to it. This way I can convert it to a Kendo button. So I'm going to copy this and let's head over to backlogs index file. And at the very top, we need to import Kendo button. That's coming from progress, Kendo UI, JS, Kendo button. We've already done this at the beginning of the course, but we didn't do this on the backlog page just yet. Let's head down to the document ready event. And right over here, I'm going to use the jQuery selector to get a hold of our button and call Kendo button on it. So now this will not only become a Kendo button, but it will also get the bootstrap styling. Take a look. This is because of that theme that we applied earlier in this chapter. Great. So now we need an icon in there. Well, I can't just add an inline icon like we did earlier, but our Kendo button takes in some options. So I can pass in an object here. And one of the options is icon. All I need to do here is just specify the icon name as plus and take a look. Now that plus icon appears in there just like that. Now, how did I know to call it plus? Well, if I go to my icons documentation and I search for plus, you can see the plus right there. And the class name is dot K dash I dash plus. So all you need to do to add an icon in line inside the button like that is to use the word plus without the K dash I. For example, if I wanted to use this plus with a circle, I would use plus dash circle, not K dash I dash plus dash circle. Let's do that. I'm going to change this icon to plus dash circle. And there's our plus with a circle. So there you have two methods of using icons in your application. Congratulations, you finished the course. We've covered several basic and advanced components that you can use to develop your own applications. And you'll discover more as you continue learning. I'm glad you joined me on this journey to learn how to use Kendo UI components and features. My name is Alex Ziskind. You can find me on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix there. And if you have any Kendo UI related questions, just send them my way. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy using Kendo UI.